This is Mosul, Iraq. It's Iraq's second-ranked city by population, and first-ranked city by which city sounds most like T-Mobile. And this is the Mosul Dam. Right now, it provides hydroelectric power and flood control for the city below, but over the last few decades, analysts have been considering what would happen if it stopped doing either of those things and instead catastrophically failed and flooded the entire region. Believe it or not, it turns out a catastrophic failure would be quite bad. In fact, the damage would be greater than a nuclear bomb. Oh, and even worse, the dam experts are pretty damn sure it's gonna happen. And, uh, oh, again, even worse than that, the government refuses to listen to a damn thing the experts have to say. But how did this happen? Well, thanks to a whole bunch of isms. Authoritarianism for one, and good old American interventionalism for another. The thing is, in a country with sand-heavy, low-lying foundations, there's really no good place to build something that needs a solid foundation to work, like making a Marvel film without a Chris. Ultimately, Saddam Hussein, Iraq's president at the time, who was almost as bad at dam location selection as he was at not getting executed, went ahead with a location due north of the city of Mosul on the Tigris River, as a dam there could ensure Iraq had the lion's share of water from the Tigris, which would would offset how much water Iraq's farmers had lost from Turkey, who had just built a bunch of dams along the Euphrates upstream, cutting off all the Iraq farmers downstream who had relied on it for thousands of years. So, building their own dam on the Tigris would accomplish several goals, as it would create consistent water supply, balance out the river's annual flood and drought cycles, and most importantly, flip the bird to Turkey. As it turns out, building a gigantic dam in the middle of the desert is pretty damn hard, requiring billions of dollars, military intervention, and most importantly, blind ignorance. Engineers warned Hussein that the Mosul region didn't feed feature any nice, solid rock to build a dam, and the most prevalent mineral layer was gypsum, a mineral that, ironically enough, dissolves in water. Building a dam in gypsum is kind of like planting your cantaloupe tree outside the house of Johnny the Cantaloupe Smasher. They warned it would take extensive grouting, or filling in the riverbanks with a less permeable rock, and lining the entire reservoir basin with more solid rock to build the dam. But not to be deterred by things like science, and facts, and catastrophic danger, Hussein ordered the dam's construction in 1981, a year after declaring war on Iran, which put pressure on its engineers and workers to finish building it fast. In the end, only 150 meters or nearly 500 feet of cement directly underneath the dam and 25 meters or 82 feet of cement between the dam and the gypsum layers was put in, despite the concerns of Hochtief Aktien Gesellschaft, the seemingly intentionally hard to pronounce German Italian company hired to build the dam. Though the engineers had warned of the dangers inherent to building a dam there for decades previously, they didn't predict how bad and how quickly there would be dam problems. Mere months after completion, small cesspools began to accumulate on riverbanks downstream and sinkholes threatened the dam's structural integrity. The dam's gypsum foundation resulted in increased seepage, which meant water continually leaked through it, which I should point out is the exact opposite of a dam's whole point. With 11 billion cubic meters or 40 trillion cubic feet of water being held back, having a soluble rock layer becomes less of an occupational hazard and more of an apocalyptic event waiting to happen. The government did order more grouting of the dam to pour cement and make the dam less likely to crack, but continues to deflect responsibility for building it instead of taking a page right out of the American playbook and blaming everyone else. Although a dam downriver near the town of Badouche was partially constructed to help mitigate a flood from the Mosul Dam, Hussein had to use its construction materials after invading Kuwait, and a few years later, the United States decided to simplify things for everyone by bombing that dam into oblivion. But of course, there's a totally awesome and sustainable and not terrifying way they're keeping the dam going. A crew of maintenance workers who pour liquid cement into the dam 24-7, 365 days a year to keep the rock from washing away. Seriously. As you can see in this simulation made by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, seemingly rendered with a heavily modded version of Sim 6, if, or more accurately, when the dam breaks, the city of Mosul could be underwater in 3 or 4 hours, creating 100 foot or 30 meter waves that would wipe out anything in its path for over 100 miles or 160 kilometers. Since most of Iraq's cities are along the Tigris, it would impact most of the country's population, and in less than a week, would eventually reach the country's largest city, Baghdad. Since its cities would be underwater, Iraq couldn't mobilize medical or emergency services anywhere. There's no telling how many people would die, though conservative estimates range from the low millions to the tens of millions. Despite harsh warnings from the US Army Corps of Engineers and the United Nations, Iraq has done little to prevent a national disaster, with officials declaring as recently as 2015 that the dam is fine, there's nothing wrong with it, and actually the rest of the world needs to stop harshing their mellow vibe. The good news is, there are several solutions to help prevent Mosul Dam's collapse. The bad news is, they either require spending billions of dollars or being nice to Turkey, two things that Iraq isn't very keen on. Iraq could design a better retaining dam to prevent any more seepage, which would cost billions, or it could drain the dam and instead partner with Turkey to build a larger dam in the Taurus Mountains, located far away from any population centers. Unfortunately, most of Iraq's populace distrust diplomacy and doesn't want the government to spend billions to fix a problem that many think is an American-bred conspiracy, a dangerous train of thought that could persist until the dam actually breaks. But surely something will be done. 
I mean, when is humanity ever put off preventing a potentially catastrophic disaster until it was too late? And whether you've revolutionized engineering or designed an ingenious diplomatic solution to prevent the world's most dangerous dam from collapsing, you probably want a professional website to share your insight. The good news is, it's super easy to get your own domain and fancy email address through Hover, which is great for any idea, dam related or not, since they have over 400 extensions beyond the usual .com or .org to tailor your domain name to whatever you want your online persona to be. I've used Hover to buy all my domains. They have fair upfront pricing, so whenever I land on a new name for a YouTube channel, quite literally the first thing I do is log on to Hover to see if my desired domain is available. I've also used them to set up custom email addresses using our domains so we can present ourselves professionally online, unlike with generic at Gmail, at iCloud, or at Yahoo ones. They also have award-winning support that I know from personal experience is excellent at solving problems quickly. Best of all, if you head to hover.com slash HAI, you can save 10% on your new domain, all while supporting this channel and getting a great deal.